I set out to create the most realistic cinder block that I could possibly make without using photogrammetry or image textures. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it for yourself. If you're interested, I'll have my Patreon linked in the description where you can download my cinder block models along with the procedural material. So before we begin, I would like to point out that I'm using inches as my unit of measurement. At default, Blender is set to the metric system, and if you would like to follow along that way, that's totally fine because I'll have all of the conversions you need on screen as needed. With that being said, our first step is to add in a cube. You want to bring out this little tab with the arrow and then find dimensions. If you're using inches, then it's going to be 8 by 8 by 8. The dimensions of an average cinder block are 8 inches high, 8 inches wide, and then 16 inches long which is why we're going to be using a mirror modifier. So go into the modifiers tab and then find a mirror modifier. And then you're gonna tab into edit mode with all the geometry selected and move the cube on the X axis until these edges meet. Just to be safe, I'm going to up the merge a little bit just so we make sure that those edges merge together. And I'm actually gonna apply the modifier just to check and then control Z to undo the apply. So now that we know that it's going to connect, we can move on to the modeling process. To tab back into edit mode, you wanna to go to face select and select the top and the bottom faces. Click I to inset. So then once those are inset, you can right click and find bridge faces. And you can see that made the whole of the cinder block. And this middle piece is thicker than the rest of the walls because we have two butting up against each other. So just select this face and then bring it in on the x-axis a little bit. So now thinking ahead a little bit, I want to have some mortar notches come out right here on the edges. To do that, I'm going to delete this wall completely. And then to flatten these faces out, I'm going to select the outermost edges, look at it on the y-plane, and then move them back on the x-axis until they meet up with the other edges. And then you can loop select those, fill them in using F, and now we're going to extrude those out to about the width of the wall. Select both of those inside faces, right click again, bridge those faces. And now our next step is I'm going to make a loop cut right here through the middle of these faces and bevel it so that we have a small little notch in between this part that juts out. So then go back to face select, select all of these faces, extrude them out, and then select the outermost faces and extrude them out a little bit. So now you can see we have those little, the little mortar notches. So normally there's a little bit of a like smooth bevel between the block and the notch. So I'm just going to select those two edges and make a bevel. Um, and I'm just gonna do like eight subdivisions on that. We can also add a bevel on these inside edges. So now at this point, we can actually apply our mirror modifier. I'm going to be using an add-on called One Click Damage. Um, I will actually have it linked down in the description as an affiliate link, so you'll be, of course, supporting the creator of the add-on, but also supporting my channel a little bit. Um, but it's super easy to use. You select whatever object that you want to add damage to, and then click the Make Damage button. I'm going to be just deleting this OCD preview thing, and then change the solver from Fast to Exact, and then in solver options, I'm going to check hole tolerant to make sure that we don't have any holes. Um, so I believe how this add-on works is it basically just has a bunch of invisible booleans and it cuts holes out of whatever object. I'm going to be turning the scale down almost all the way. And then I'm also going to bring the amount down because I don't want a ton of damage on the cinder block. And one thing that I uh, forgot that I should have done before adding this add-on, but um, I want to add in a bevel node just to give it a little bit of a bevel on these edges. So make sure to put that before the OCD boolean. I'm going to bring that down a little bit, about right there. You don't want a ton of a bevel because you still want it to be a sharp edge, but you really never want 100% sharp edges on anything when working in 3D. Anyway, back to the damage. Using this POS button, 
If you click it and move your cursor around, then it will basically just change the position of your damage. And you can play around with that as much as you'd like. All right, and once you get it to a place that you're happy with, first should apply the bevel modifier, and then you can apply the one-click damage add-on. At this point, if you want a lower poly cinder block, you could stop here, but I'm going to add an extra step and add a remesh modifier. So what that's gonna do is it's really gonna smooth out the transition between the damage and the rest of the block. And it's also gonna give us geometry to work with so we can add displacement on top of the block to give it that really rough, realistic texture. So um, I'm also gonna be deleting this right here. I just don't need it in this specific case. And then I'm going to add in a remesh modifier. Using voxel remesh, I'm going to be doing 0.02 inches. Once you get the remesh modifier how you want it, you can also apply that. So that's everything for modeling. Um, before I move on to texturing, I'm just going to make a floor with a quick lighting setup so that we can actually see the material. And now for the shading, I'm going to go into the shading tab, make a new material, and delete the principled BSDF. Um, I have already made a node for the cinder block material and all of the connections inside of it are extremely specific connections and numbers that would take me a very long time to explain. So I'm just going to put the material up on screen for you to copy if you want or you can download it from a link that I'll have in the description. Um, the only thing that needs to be changed when applying this node to a new material is you need to go into the settings tab, bring that down and go to surface, change the displacement from bump only to displacement and bump. That's so that we can use the remesh modifier and actually get actual bump on our objects. So that's everything for creating the cinder block. Remember to go check out my Patreon and um, follow me on Instagram because I keep everything pretty well updated on there. I've been posting reels about my creation of, these, of this material and the blocks. So um, definitely check me out on there. And um, yeah, thank you for watching.